Hello friends and fellow flute enthusiasts. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Johnny's Flute Reviews. In this episode, we're looking at a very special flute from my collection that has a really special story behind it. So stay tuned as we look at a flute made by Brad Young of Four Winds Flutes. Welcome back to Johnny's Flute Reviews. I'm Johnny Lipford, and since 2002, I've dedicated myself to everything flute. I now teach, perform, and record full-time with the Native American flute. If you're interested in becoming a more emotive flute player, or you just love the sounds of the Native American flute, be sure you subscribe and hit that little bell so you're notified every time a video drops. I frequently post videos of flute tips, tutorials, original songs, and cover songs to showcase how versatile the flute can be. So in today's episode, I have a very unique flute uh, that has a story behind it. And from the intro of this video, you probably heard that it sounds a little different, the scale of it. And you're spot on with that because this flute made by Brad Young of Four Winds Flutes is made from Western Red Cedar. It has uh, some walnut um, end caps as well as a carved dragon up here. Um, it's tuned to the key of A major. So this is gonna play um, just like, not just like, but it's gonna play the scale that you would find in an F sharp minor flute, but playing the major scale of that F sharp minor flute. And so, it's a major diatonic flute, and these are becoming more and more popular as flute makers um, have been making more and flute players, uh, specifically Native American style flute players, are looking for more interesting things to play and looking for a little bit more range out of their flutes. Um, on a standard modern Native American flute, we can get um, the full major scale uh, but this makes it a little bit easier. And you'll notice that when I play this, uh, that I am not um, keeping any of my fingers down. You know, like typically we keep that third one from the top down. Well, on this guy, we lift all of them. And so what we end up with is that uh, classic scale that, that we've learned <laughs> in, in uh, music education. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And I cover all the holes and I crack that top one and that allows me to get the octave note a little easier rather than just forcing it. Now, the story behind how this flute became um, a flute in my collection is really, really, um, really sad, but also um, really touching. Um, so I grew up in Florida and while living with my parents in Florida, uh, back in 2006, our house caught fire, uh, June 28th, 2006. That date just kind of sticks, stuff like that happens, it just sticks with you. So um, what resulted from that is I lost almost every single flute in my collection. And at the time I had, you know, probably 30 flutes or so. And um, gratefully, uh, thankfully, I had uh, people in my life who donated a couple flutes to me um, and I'm very, very appreciative of that. This was a little bit different story. Um, this one was a group effort. So after hearing about the um, fire uh, that my parents and I went through um, and losing so many flutes in my collection, several, uh, several flute players got together, uh, flute enthusiasts got together and donated a little bit of money and commissioned Brad Young to make this flute uh, for me and uh, I've always been attracted to uh, diatonic flutes and bass flutes, and this was a really great um, combination of those two things. And so it's not very common, and for many it can be a little awkward and um, you know cause some pain. There's a video of mine on playing bass flutes, and so we have to use some of those measures with that. Um, but they got together and they commissioned Brad to make this flute, 
Um, it has a dragon here um, carved out of walnut. It's a very tall block, so if I travel with this, I take something a little smaller that I put on it. Um, down here, I don't know how well you can see this. I'll try to hold it uh, to where we can see it better. So down here, what we have is we have some inlay just above this end cap here, and it is a fire down below, and then there is a phoenix um, here just above, and so it is uh, the phoenix rising from the ashes. And that whole experience, uh, if you look back at the um, at my discography, uh, the CDs that I've released. My very first CD was released in 2007, about a year after our house fire, and it's called Transitions, Out of the Flames and Into the Wind. And so that was the whole pivotal part of creating music. And so it's, it's really about that phoenix rising from the ashes, you know, like even in, um, you know, desperate times and when things are really hard, you know, it's like that's where we experience the most growth sometimes as painful as it is you know that caterpillar's got to go through a lot of pain in order to become a butterfly if we help it at all um, you know if we do the work for it then it will never manifest into what it truly needs to be and I'm not saying that you shouldn't help your neighbor that's not at all what I'm saying here but we personally have to go through some of that in order to uh, become stronger and more resilient so this flute is a very special flute in my collection. I'll just, I'd like to play a little bit more for you uh, and I encourage you to uh, close your eyes unless you wanna watch what my fingers are doing um, and just take in uh, the sound of this awesome flute. <laughs> So again, this is a flute made by Brad Young, Four Winds Flutes, uh, made from Western Red Cedar and Walnut with uh, a little bit of um, inlay in it. So thanks for tuning into this episode of Johnny's Flute Reviews. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to my story. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more flute reviews, flute tips and tutorials, as well as original songs and cover songs. We have a lot of flutes back here to go through, so uh, stick with me and stay tuned. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.